So this is a genuine situation for Lisa and myself. I've got her ready for many a red carpet and an event. And we're gonna show you the process that we go through. Slightly different when you're getting ready for the red carpet because you've got to deal with a lot of flash bulbs and you can have those issues of flashback and you want your makeup to last all night and you want to make your face and your features really stand out but without being too heavily made up. So this is what we do. First of all, we start with Elemis um, eye patches here. These are the pro collagen ones. I really love these because they take lots of hyaluronic. Hyaluronic is fantastic for under eye area. So once you've put these on, they last for about you know, 15, 20 minutes. It just literally softens the area under the eye, making the skin look really young and fresh. You'll see in a minute. And if you've got puffy eyes, put them in the fridge before you put them on. Top tip. Nice and cooling. Top Deep tip. puffs. And if you're not near a fridge, put them in a glass of ice. There you go. We just, we just keep giving, keep giving. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason that we start with these and we don't wait, I mean, sometimes if someone's doing her hair, then maybe they'll sit there and I'll do her makeup, but it's a great way to catch any eye makeup. So I'm gonna actually do Lisa's eye makeup now. I'm gonna start with a little bit of concealer over her eyes, do her brows, do most of her eye makeup. Then I'm gonna go back and then do her base, finish it off and then connect the two together. <gasps> Red carpet ready. So first we're gonna prep the eyelid by using Bourjois Healthy Mix. Now this is a great foundation that's light. Close your eyes for me just eradicates any pink or any uneven skin tones over Lisa's eyes, but it dries really lightly. And then I'm gonna dust it over with a little bit of powder to create the perfect base for our eye. Next, I'm gonna use a little bit of Next to Nothing. This is a really lovely pressed powder by MAC that is very non-evident. What I mean is you can't really see it on the skin. And I love all these super fine powders, especially when working on the eye. So just dust that over. Now we've got the perfect base, for the eyeshadow. Now for this look, I'm going to be doing a really um, sculpted eye with lashes and liner. And I want a lovely neutral shade of eyeshadow. And I love this palette by Too Faced. It's got all the colours that you could possibly want. So it's got your two mattes for shading. Shaping the eye. Really nice. And then you've got these lovely metallics, and a slight rose, a slight pewter, gold, and a bronze. It's like a real kind of basic palette. And it smells like chocolate. Like chocolate. Sweet like chocolate. Sweet like chocolate. Amazing. Mm, I'm not sure if I like that or not. I do. But I love the colours and I love the texture. Does it not make you want to eat chocolate? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, that just that smell is amazing. But I'm re when with products I smell everything. Right. Literally, okay. I buy a mascara, I smell it. Which is your best smelling mascara? Um I think the Dior Show one's yes. really yummy, isn't it? And the YSL. Really? The rose. Oh, of course it is. Mm. And that's when you know that it's, it's past its sell-by date, when the rose smell goes. Or, yeah, or it's totally off. Or it's right really, really, style. really yeah, cakey. Exactly. But apparently when the smell kind of dies away, then that's when you need to yep. chuck it. Right, I'm going to start here with Cashmere Bunny. It's a lovely matte to shape Lisa's eye. Now, I'm not a personal fan of lots of fussy eyeshadow. Right, so push the product into your hand. Move the excess. And I'm just going to lift Lisa's lid and rather than stroke the shadow, I'm just going to press it initially. This just helps me absorb any little bits of oil and prevents that creasing from happening. Mm. Nice colour. This is a really kind of classic bony brown. You'll use this for like something really natural or a lovely base for like the beginning of something you know, maybe a little bit more technical. For what we want, we want to really bring out the shape of your eye. I'm going to use a liner, a few little lashes, but just kind of work with your eye structure and just enhance that. Right, so when you've got the colour in place, then just take a clean eyeshadow brush and just blend it. So the edge of the eyeshadow just blends cleanly into the socket so there's no hard lines. I find it so relaxing having my makeup done. Mm. I absolutely love it. I'm going to use a cotton bud with a darker colour now, and this is called Sex Presso. And again, like my brush, I'm going to place that colour and just push it into there so I don't get a lot of fallout. Close your eye for me, and I'm just going to take this colour and just push it into Lisa's lash line and just bring it out. So I'm following the contour again of her eye, using her own eye shape as a guide, and then Take the cotton bud, which is such a brilliant makeup tool, and then just blend that slightly into the other shadow. Just making sure when you open your eye that you don't get a gap between the lashes and the colour. 
you get a gap, then you're just not sharpening your eye shape too much. So you've gone really close to the lashes, yep. just to almost like a liner, but with yes. a soft... Really soft liner, because we're going to go in with intensity, and then just really do your circular motions with the bird. And if you me. So you get a nice soft lift. So two matte colours, softly applied, is a good start. So if I was ever going to do like a dark kind of smoky eye or more a dramatic eye, I'd always think that I'd have to apply like a kind of really sort of beigey base before I then applied the actual colour rather than it sort of being more of this Brownie, bony. Yes, well, e either or, but I think if you're going to go dark, just build up gradually. Because if you go dark straight onto your lid, even with a bit of foundation, it's hard to kind of like softly blend it. So I'm now going to take a, already. a clean brush and I'm just going to use the pinky lighter one here, which is actually for the skin. That's just called Heaven. It's quite got a sort of highlighted yeah. pigment, so it's got a little iridescent. Very soft. And what iridescent does is add lightness. So close your eye. So just in here, with a rounded brush, I'm just going to add a touch of light so that when you open your eye, you get a nice shot of light from that area, which can tend to be a little bit dark. But it's very soft. It's just like a very sort of shell effect. So it's not too white where it becomes too cold and it looks very sort of makeup-y. It blends really well. It's not too gold either. I love these tones that kind of flatter your skin tone, but don't sort of overpower them or just sit on top of your eye and just look like makeup. And I'm just doing literally that on the first third of your eye. And because you've got the eye pads on, you can be kind of quite brave about how you're applying it. Yeah, because it does ultimately drop down, yeah, doesn't it? So then it there's nothing more annoying than when you've done your base and your concealer and then you do your eyes and then you've got all this yeah. makeup down here, then you have to clean it off and start again. So exactly. this is a much better way of doing it. And it allows you just to be a bit more creative and less, you know, a bit more freer with it. Because if you have done a perfect base, you then get a little bit sort of precious about mm. things. Right, so now we've done that. It's a really kind of like soft, not too fussy eye. We're really going to work on the shape of your eye. So first of all, I'm going to use this bourgeois liner. Now, I love this particular eyeliner. One, because it's got a really, really sharp point to it. Um, close your eye for me. And also, it helps me get really close to the lash line. It also dries completely matte. Now, some liquid liners can dry a bit shiny mm. and they end up kind of being quite reflective. I don't like that look. And because we're working with, you know, flash, I want this just to be a really kind of matte liner. Now, if you open your eyes and look to your left for me, Lisa, that's a perfect way for me just to get right in to the inner corner of the eye. And where I'm painting here, just in the inner corner of Lisa's eye, is a really key point to accentuate the shape of your eye that doesn't overpower your eye. So if you look into the mirror now, if you compare that to the other side of Lisa's eye, that looks much more defined. It's not finished, it's not polished yet, but just really getting a nice fine point really helps you shape your eye without it looking as though it's overpowered by the makeup. It's my favourite look, this with a black line. Is it's it? It's so hard to do myself though. It is tricky, it just needs a little bit of, it's just stretching the eye, moving the eye to make sure that the liner goes in between and especially if you've got bumpy lids then it's really hard to get a straight shape but most of us if you don't go too thick on it can get a nice straight shape it's just that you don't want to extend it out too far if you've got like a, a hooded eye which you don't or anything like that it but can then go too distorted it's starting to move though as i'm getting older the eyelids are obviously slightly drooping so it is harder to i can almost achieve the line but then it's like you said it's the flick yes. at the end it's like they're never even, so I'm doing one and then I'm taking it off yeah. with a... Co it's quite tricky. A bit like your brows. Treat them as sisters, not twins. So you just have to work with each eye. Right. If you close your eye for me, I'm just going to lift it slightly, just very gradually. It's got such a lovely fine point. And then I'm going to blend it in and I check that. If you just open and look straight towards me, I can see that that works beautifully now with your eye shape. So that line here is coming in and connecting with the under eye, and that's where I know that I've got a good shape. Now, I'm not going to push it up too much. I'm going to use the lashes and mascara Ooh. to give you that wing effect. Oh, that's amazing. I don't... Mm. So you just keep your eye open and then just see yeah. where... So see, so see the angle of your own eye shape and see where that would come. And so if, I was, if this look was going to be more dramatic, and I was... Well, let me just take it just for purposes of showing you. 
this is the angle that the bottom of your line takes. The bottom of your lower lashes comes to here. Pull your eye to stretch the skin open for me. And then that just gives you a nice shape there. I can't actually see that, so does that look good? I like it. Yeah, perfect. I love it. Great. I love that look. Good, and that's as far as you want to go. Mm -hmm. We can accentuate that further with mascara. Mm -hmm. So you start with it nice and fine. So if you look to the right for me, really fine. And you're almost, you see how I'm lifting Lisa's eye. You almost want to lift your own eye and just paint the skin underneath so that when it drops, the line's even smaller. So it's so delicate. And start, start finer and then build it up. As in like thickening exactly. it up. Because using... Um, Using a liquid liner, it's so easy to make the line too thick, especially if you've got small eyelids, because you can really close your eyes and so make it super skinny and build it out gradually. You just do it so quickly. Well, it's obviously, sometimes it's easier, you know, to do it on someone else, you know, just because I'm following, I never apply makeup without actually looking at the aesthetics of your face, so I'm following the shape of your eye. So if you look in the straight ahead for me, so I'm using the shape of your eye to dictate to me how I put this liner on. Now you can use gel liners as well. That's when you've got the little brush and you apply it. Exactly, and that's yeah. nice and creamy. Mm. But sometimes I find that I get really impatient clients and they're like, and their eyes are up and down. I'm like, no, you've just imprinted on here. This dries really quick. So this is why I like to use this one. Extend that out slightly. So I just take each eye, and if I was working with you, I'd be scooping around that side. Yes. I'll check this profile, I'll check that side of your profile. Can you see? Great. Yeah? Happy? I'm happy. Close your eye for me. So now we just got to balance this on out. So a nice fine tip is really key. And again, lifting up, because you really want to place like, the liquid liner almost to the roots of your lashes not sort of painting on the lid. And I think if you have that in mind, it's much easier for you to apply a thinner line. Open for me. See to me. Great. It's a little bit thicker on this side. Just to balance that out slightly here. And this is time consuming, you'll get used to it. But once you've nailed it, it's a really great look to have. And you can wear this with a red lip, you can just wear it by itself. So you know, versatile. It is really versatile. I love it. I think it's so flattering. I think it, it just look. accentuates the eyes, it just gives it a real sort of... I just always loved it. It's like sort of quite sort of sexy French girl look. Yeah, it's just very demure and it's timeless, right? Okay. Perfect. Good. Check yep. your flicks. Good. Love the flick. Good yeah. flicks. Flick, Happy flick. With the balance. Yeah. Right. So before I'm going to use some lashes, and I'm going to use these duos and trios just to make it a bit quicker. <gasps> so they're individual lashes that are actually grouped together, so oh, you wow. get more of a chunk. They're still impossible for me to put on by myself, honestly. Really? Like yeah. one I can do, the other one I just feel like my wrist is up the wrong. Maybe I need to use both left and right, and I just can't. Anyway, it's not about me. You're doing it on me, so it's fine. I'm not going to curl your lashes. Curled lashes and um, individual lashes sometimes kind of okay. don't fix together. The curl is too far back, you can't get the lash to kind of have that beautiful curl, so it's best to avoid that. Wow. Once you've got it on, you can then bend it with your fingers for the extra lift. But I'm going to use a great chunky mascara. This is called Superhero by It. Put it down for me as a base. So I always put the mascara on first, and that gives me a lovely base to layer the individual lashes onto. If you just layer them onto a um, natural lash, especially if your lashes are fine, you find that maybe it kind of like disappears in between the lashes or um, it doesn't sit and lay beautifully. So if you give yourself a nice base to start with, it's much easier to whack them on. Then you have to secure them by putting a bit of mascara on. Nice. And yeah. you see already having that line there with that flick, it's already got that kind of feline vibe, which I love. Exactly, and it really helps you apply your mascara. So when you put your mascara on, imagine you're like, it's like when you're blow drying your hair, you need to pull the lashes in that direction. So we're going up in the center, and then when I've come to these outer lashes, I'm using the nib to really drag the lashes out to follow that flick that I've drawn on your eye. Oh, love it. And for a red carpet, just having this definition 
I love, you know, you just need, because I found that when I do my makeup for the red carpet, when the flash bulbs from all the photographers kind of hit your face, you just don't, it just, you can, you can wear more than you think you need. Absolutely. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, so you can end up having very, very delicate features. Your features get washed out. Absolutely. So you Everything need to kind of like reinforce the structure of your face. Yeah. And people are often worried about black mascara, black line, I need something soft, but your pupils are black. And you want to really enhance your eyes, so go with that because it really does draw your eye out. Don't be timid. And even if you're not going on the red carpet and you're just going to a really lovely party or a, yeah. you know, some kind of big work event, it's still really nice in the evening to have a little bit more drama. Absolutely agree. A little bit more definition. So these ones, these are the Eyelore Lash Pro. I use these because they've got short, medium and long. Now, I don't really want to make them really long at the end. I like them to actually work with the shape of your lashes. So I'm going to start with the short ones first. See, they're stuck together too. And I'm just going to put that in the glue, which I've just popped on my hand here. I'm going to start this side because I'm sitting this side. Perfect. They're probably about three millimetres longer than your own. So I'm just going to chuck those there. I'm so tempted to look, but I'm just going to let them dry. I'm just going to go with slightly longer ones towards the outer side. Medium. Open are you doing them me? in a line Open or are you... Yeah, I'm just pulling them out on the outer corner. So I've got a short one and I've got a medium and I'm going to go for another medium. So I'm going to use three. So it's actually like putting six individual ones on. And look at that little flick at the end. It's so gorgeous. Um, and just stay it's there, my darling. Now I'm going to pull this out slightly. So I've gone forward, forward, and when with this last one I've pulled it out. So if you look into the mirror or you look into the camera, you can just see it coming out more. And that's what we want. Whereas if you want more of a doe-eyed effect, you'd put them in the centre and you'd lift them up, but you wouldn't do it on the outside. So you can play with the shape of your eye, depending on what look you're going for. This is the look I want. This sexy, sweeping... Cat eye. Cat eye, exactly. <gasps> right, so let's go in with a short one again. This come around from here for me, please. So helpful, just having that mascara on. If you've ever struggled putting individuals on, just try that trick first, it makes all the difference. And because they're slightly thicker, you can apply them with your hands. You're just dropping them on and they're just you... falling in the yes. right place, I don't understand. Well, having the mascara does help massively and these are slightly thicker, remember. And what's also important is that when you're using eyelashes, especially when you're older, you want to make sure that you get that really delicate um, thread. A thick strip of a lash looks very theatrical and very ageing and unnatural. It's tricky, isn't it? Yeah, so we can just literally hide these lashes in between yours and then we'll give them a lovely flick on the outside and give us that lovely lift. So I'm just going to let them sit and dry and when the glue glows clear we're ready to put mascara on. More so mascara! <laughs> So we're going to leave that now, so what I'd love you to do is to take off your beautiful eye pads for me and let's have a feel the texture of your skin. Luscious. And nice that and feels plumped. nice, doesn't it? It plumped feels up and dewy. so lovely. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on. For those of you who follow my channel, you'll know that I love El Curia oil and I'm just going to dab a little bit on my hand. I love the effect of using a little bit of oil just around this area of the face where I want it to really shine, just a tiny little bit either side, and just going to sit into Lisa's skin, even though she's had the eye pads, it's just really nice under the base, it's just a habit that I've followed and used, and I just love how dewy it makes the skin, and just a little bit of residue just on your lips there. Wonderful. How do you guys feel? They feel okay? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And they don't feel heavy, you don't feel like you're wearing lashes at all. That's really the thing, don't. is it? Because lashes can be really heavy. Even a good coat of mascara mm. can feel quite heavy. And sometimes you can just fit. If it's a strip lash, and it's sort of sometimes there, it's like either the glue's got caught a little bit on your own lashes, mm. or it's not quite perfect. And you're like, all night, you're a bit like, you're like, is it coming off? Is it coming off? Is it coming off? Eyelash glue in your handbag, nightmare. Right. So for the primer, I'm going to be using Hylamide HA Blur, which I've nearly come to the end of. This is just a really beautiful silicone primer that sits over the front of the face. Slightly mattifies the skin here, which was what I want, but it feels so soft and it literally just gives a lovely flat surface for the base to go onto the skin. You can see how it changes 
the skin texture immediately. And you were mentioning about not having an SPF in your products if you are going on a red carpet event or if there's going to be photographers and flashes. Yeah, so not everyone goes on a red carpet, but like maybe you're going to a wedding and it's an evening wedding, you're going to have lots of flash or you're going to, you know, be taking pictures of yourself as a selfie with a flash. You know, you get that awful white ghostly finish and that's because of the titanium and zinc oxide in a product that contains SPF. Okay. So if you use a product that doesn't contain that, you are not going to have any flashback. Perfect. But if you really want to, so long as you use a powder with a colour in, that will also kick that back as well. But just because you have a ridiculous amount of light bulbs to deal with, I just make sure that I don't use any SPF. Cool, cut it out. Right, so following that conversation, Makeup Forever Ultra HD. Now this is a foundation I absolutely love. It's so sheer on the skin. Um, the pigments, it's basically made for, for HD TV. So it's made for real kind of like poreless, flawless skin. Mm -hmm. um, but it just works and photographs absolutely beautifully. So let me just see your colour here. I always test on the chin first, just making sure because you've got a lovely kind of brown skin tone to your body. Yeah, I'll probably just go, just mixing a darker one here. Very lightly. So I'm using this dual fibre MAC foundation brush. Best brush. Love yeah, it for foundation. Angry. Um, and I'm just delicately applying it where you need it. Now Lisa has amazing skin, so I'm just going to cover it where I need to. And just keeping it light. Now applying it with this brush gives a really light, delicate application, whereas if I applied it with a flat brush I'd get a much heavier finish, but I don't want to do that. I just feel like it just whips and yeah. it just sort of gets through like the little fine hairs and just gives it a really delicate yeah. coverage, doesn't it, rather than a really thick one, which I love. Now, I've done this opposite to what I normally do. Normally I start in the centre, around the T-zone, but I've started around the perimeter of Lisa's face because I'm just making sure that the body, skin on her face, neck and shoulders all match. Therefore, it looks all completely natural. And then just to make sure that I'm lightening and shaping her face, I'm going to go in with a slightly lighter colour underneath her eyes. So the skin works beautifully there. I'm just going to use a little bit of Bioterry Densalist just around the eye area which you can see is much, much lighter. And I'm just going to let that sit. Now this is going to go right into the inner corner of her eyes, in between her nose where she's darkest. It's not really dark at all under your eyes, actually looking very healthy. So I'm going to let this concealer sit in Lisa's skin. And I'm going to be using Vanish Stick by Hourglass in Ivory. Now this is just a dream foundation stick. You can use it all over your face, you can use it in tiny little bits, or you can just use it in areas you want to touch up. So I'm just using a heavier base with the vanish stick just around Lisa's T-zone because I want this look to last. I want her skin just to look really polished and perfected. But this product, tell me if I'm wrong, but feels super light on the skin. Does, it really does, but good coverage. Great coverage, great coverage. Feels like it's quite creamy. Good. Which I love because I don't like that feeling of that heavy base. No. It's, there's nothing worse than just yeah. like because you know that obviously you're going to be on the red carpet and they're going to be photographers but you're going to be talking to people too so they're going Correct. to be in your face so yeah. then if you've got this mask of really heavy yeah. face you're just a bit like I've got a lot of makeup on I'm really sorry so I don't want that I want the skin to still look fresh but to have the coverage so it's a right. real happy medium so going on with that I'm going to use the Laura Mercier blush cream blush in Canyon so if you just look forward for me so I'm going to keep this on the cheeks here and this is such a beautiful shade Again, it's just like a soft, warm caramel. It's not too pink, it's not too peachy. And that will just add a little bit of definition to your face and do a little bit of subtle contour too. Because I haven't used any powder, I can just move and blend the colours of your skin around until we get something that's kind of really soft. Doing these things, you always have to take into consideration that it'll be probably about sort of 40 minutes before you get shot by a photographer. So, we start heavy and then we can always pull back later if we need to by using a bit of facial spray or a setting spray but I just think after about 40 minutes your skin has kind of absorbed a little bit of yeah. the makeup and it settles down quite a lot doesn't yeah. it so you can kind of leave it and it sort of just mellows to the perfect mellows yeah that's a mellows. nice word great okay now to blend in with this I'm going to use Max Factor's contour kit Ooh. now contouring is obviously you know, quite scary for some people, but if you use a cream powder, a cream, 
um, and you're just using shades that mimic a natural shadow like these kind of grey tones you'll get a nice finish yeah because contouring it's been a kind of a bad word hasn't it because you just kind of you just imagine that really heavy yeah. heavy contoured look um, but you can do it really subtly and make it look really good. Turn to the left for me and I'm just going to look at your bone structure so here underneath here is a natural shadow so I'm just going to take this brush very gently and it's very thin this brush I'm just going to gradually build up the shadow very slightly and then I'm going to pull it into the blush Mm. So if you do a little bit of contour, if you keep it cream, you should just be able to naturally mimic She's giving me cheekbones. your, <gasps> your cheekbone. But listen, it's not a stripe at all, and that's the beauty of cream over powder, I think. And that's a really nice tone. Can you give me a jawline Similarly, too? Similarly, yeah, so if you just keep it there, so, your, so it's like sketching. So your jawline goes along here. Or should go along there. Does go along there. Does now. <laughs> And if you just give me the other side of your face, darling. So I know that your cheekbone sits here, visualising it. And if you're stuck, a really good point is look at the top of your ear to the corner of your mouth. Okay? And then you get a nice angle of what your cheekbone, the bottom of your cheekbone, where it should be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just, just really to... subtle little tricks. Yeah. Very and subtle. All yeah. the difference. And that I'm pushing it into your blush. And I'm going to feather that line away so it's just really blending out. And like for years and years, I think the first makeup palette that I ever bought from MS had like three shades for your blush. Do you know what I mean? The darker, the pinkier, the mm -hmm. highlighter ones. This is not a new thing by any account. Nice. If you just look into the mirror, you should see that it's just slightly more angular. Mm. This bit. Oh, well done. <laughs> Don't leave out this bit of jaw. Oh, oh not the jaw. Perfected oh, jaw. Oh, jaw on slide. jaws. <laughs> So it's like working with a pro, I can't get away with anything. <laughs> so again, just sculpting where I want it to be. Using the palette to help me. You can adjust the colours, darken the colours if you want it, or you can use a lighter shade. And just extending it down there, just really, very subtle. It all rushes all over the place. And I'm like, guess what? Let me look! I'm like, oh my god, I've got a chin again! <laughs> Not just three, I've got one. Just look towards the camera, and then just straight across underneath the chin there and all these tiny weeny little things you know for a big event do make a difference it's gorgeous so before we go back to your eyes I'm just going to set everything with a little bit of the MAC next nothing powder in between your brows either side of the nose and because I've used the right products you're not like really heavily dewy which is perfect because I don't mm. want you to look like that mm. because otherwise I'm gonna have to put so much powder on to make sure that you're not so shiny but you're going to be shining in the right way so one of my favourite products to create shine is this Hourglass palette. I mean, they do glow like no other brand. I love to use creams because I love to use oils a lot of the time. But if I'm working on an artist for red carpet, this gives the most beautiful shine. It's really subtle as well, isn't really it? Really subtle and it doesn't read as powder. Mm, it just say. reads as a really decadent, I can't say sort of fresh and healthy, but it's a real decadent sheen to the skin. I mean, I've got the Hourglass, the Ambient palette, which yes. I love, Ambient 3, and I just literally use it all day and into night as well because you've got the powders in there, you've got the really soft highlighter, and then you've got like a lovely pinky blush as yeah. well. So it's just, it ticks all the boxes. Right, so before we finish your eyes, I'm just going to do a little bit of brow work. And I'm going to be using the HD brow powders. Um, just want to keep the look really soft. These last really well. It's going to build up underneath with a very soft shadow, which is almost just almost like two shades lighter than your eyebrow, and just go with the shape of your brow rather than sort of transform it too much so that it looks soft and natural. I think a really overdone brow can instantly date this kind of look, just to kind of keep the sophistication and class in it you just want to keep the brow soft and not too dense is what I'm trying to say and sometimes mm -hmm. when you're using um, a cold pencil it can look much much deeper mm -hmm. and I think just too severe there, too severe mm. gives nice softness and you can really see the difference it's lovely in the brow like that and I've just mixed two shades together I've got a palette here it's easy for me at work this is kind of a little more sort of wheaty color and a much darker cooler toned color mix the two together and with Lisa's brows I just want to Painting a few under there just to create a nice lift. 
open up the brow and then just thicken the outer edge. Good. And just to fix, I'm going to use the Diego de la Palma Clear Brow Fix. Fix the brows, keep the centre ones nice and high giving a lift to the brow keeps it really fresh and less dense as well I feel like it gives you an eye lift as well like when totally. you put the the brow fix on it just feels like it's like lifting up so one last coat of mascara now I'm going to be using Clinique Power Lash this is a tubing mascara so this is basically um, a mascara formula that contains polymers in oh so it's like the, it's got the little Yes. filament thingies Tubes, on it. Ah, yeah. oh, that's what Which tubing I'm is. Definitely going to use this on your lower lashes. Ooh. So, because that makes sure that um, no mascara is going to imprint on your lower lash underneath your eye throughout, you know, the red carpet and on your interviews and stuff. And this just connects the lash together and just seals it in place. So when you wash your face, you'll just you'll find that it comes off in a different way. It will come off in pieces or little tubes rather than just dissolving. Yes but it's really, really great for underneath the lower lash. There's a few good tubing mascaras out. Diego de la Palma does one as well. I love DHC, and this one is also great. And so the but glue from the lashes has all gone see-through now, has it? So you can't yes. see that anymore? Yes. So then that's the perfect time to like blend the mascara yes. with the lashes. <gasps> God, they're even longer. So that's what it does. It's like it gives this Yes, just fiber. elongates it and just basically sets the mascara within the polymer fibers that encase the lash to create these tubes. Mm. So a lot of the time with the tubing mascaras is that you don't get a lot of bulk. Um, they kind of encase the lash, just like you can see underneath here. And I'm going to do that very delicately. Um, and it just gives a really nice shape. You don't get like, a lot of volume with these, but if you layer it over the top, then you get a little bit of That's volume and get something else. The mistake I've done before is I've only used that kind of mascara yeah. on naked lashes yeah, which is lovely but it's very soft and natural uh, but it also and you try and build it up and then it gets a little bit too much yes but if you if you put that on top of already a nice base yeah, of mascara oh, tips fabulous right so now we're going to go to lips now this is the top that you're wearing mm -hmm. for tonight's event um we're in role play now um and i've got all my charlotte tilbury Lipsticks here. It's very makeup up because what you've it's done. taking me about 20 minutes to kind of open everyone and close it, but it did break my heart taking out the palette. <laughs> so I'm thinking something kind of like nudie. I think so, so too. Maybe just like with a hint of warmth to it, maybe something like Penelope Pink's always a classic. Mm -hmm. I quite like the look of these, that one as well. Yeah. What's nude that one? Nude Kate. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, let's try Go nude, for nude Kate. Kate. Fine, all right. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to apply the lipstick first, and then we're going to go in with the liner. So, oh wow, that way round. Yes, because I want to really inject the colour. These, these lipsticks have a lovely consistency to them as well. So if you stretch your lips for me, and then also you can see if that's going to work nicely. Yes, that is a really contemporary colour, especially against your warm skin tone. It's quite Bardot-y, isn't it? Yeah, I love that Bardot look. So when you've got a bit more of a dramatic eye going on, a bit more of a sexy feline eye, they're having a nice nude south of France, Bridget yes. Bardot back in the day. Oof! It makes your teeth look really white as well, your eyes look really white. Now rub that together for me. <laughs> That's nice, I love this look. Just gonna push it there. Nice, rub, rub, rub together. Now I'm going to do a little bit of liner, but I'm just going to do the liner over the top. Okay, so again, stretch your lips for me. This is a slightly darker shade mm -hmm. than the lip, which is really nice because it gives great definition to the mouth if you've got a slightly darker lip line. But I'm not talking sort of like 80s chocolate brown, Shola girl. I'm just talking about something that's just very subtle because the light of your lipstick in the centre of your lips here and here just gives a slightly fuller effect to the lip. Gorgeous, it's very sort of Versace. Mm. Love it. Back in the day, a little bit. I mean, the line is not as dark yeah. as that, but I do love that kind of. Yeah. <gasps> and it feels nice, like if you're talking, it feels moisturized, yeah. it's not too matte, it's yeah. not too glossy. It's lovely. Love it? Love it. 
I'm red carpet ready. <sighs> He's got a camera and a big flash. <laughs> So if you love Lisa's look, then please look in the description box and you'll find a list of all the products that we used in this tutorial. And you'll also find a link to Lisa's beauty site called You Glow Girl. It's a great read. Please let us know what you think, if you've liked all the tips, and um, we'll see you soon, maybe. Oh, Bye for now. You. Bye. <laughs>